So welcome to the channel. In today's session, we'll be seeing non-distracted testing of Unit One MCQs. Question number one: Hardness is the ability of a material to resist. Option A is given as scratching. Option B is given as abrasion. Option C is given as cutting and penetration. Option D is given as all the above. Hardness is ability of a material to resist scratching, abrasion, and cutting and penetration. So I'm going with option number D, all the above. Question number two: The commonly used hardness test is option A is given as Brinell hardness test, option B is given as given as Wicker's hardness test, and option C is given as Rockwell hardness test, and option D is given as all the above. The all the three are the hardness test commonly used hardness test. So I'm going with option. D all the above. I am going to option D all the above. Question number three: If the BHN value, Brinell hardness test number value is higher than the material is said to be, option A is given as harder, option B is given as softer, option C is given as brittle, and option D is given as ductile. If the BN value is higher, then the material is said to be harder. Going with option number A, harder. Question number four: If the BHN is less, then the material is said to be option A harder, option B softer, option C brittle, and option D ductile. I'm going with option D softer because BHN is less. Question number five: The Brin in the Brinell test, dash type of intender is used. Option A is given as hardened steel ball intender. Intender. Option B is given as steel ball intender. Option C is given as any one of the above, and option D is given as none of these. You guys may think, what is the difference between hardened steel ball intender and uh, steel just a steel ball intender? So we'll be going with option number C. But in a Brinell hardness test, we'll be using hardened type, hardened that is heat treated. So I'm going with option number A, hardened steel ball intender. Question number six: The Brinell hardness test. The diameter of the intender is. Option A is given as 10 mm. Option B is given as 20 mm. Option C is given as 5 mm. Option D is given as 30 mm. The diameter of the intender, that is the diameter of the ball, is option A, 10 mm. We are using a hardened steel ball type intender, so I am going with option number A, 10 mm. In the previous question, five in question five, in the Brinell test. That type of intender is used. We said it is hardened steel bond intender. In the place, if hardened is not given, then you can go with steel bond intender. If uh, in the question hardened is given that is specified, then you have to go with uh, option A, hardened steel bond intender only. Question number seven. In Brinell hardness test, the standard load range between question number option number A is given as high hundred to three hundred kg. Option B is given as five hundred to three uh, three thousand kg. Option C is given as thousand to one thousand five hundred kg. And option D is given as Thousand to ten thousand kg. In Brinell hardness test, it's standard load range between five hundred to three thousand kg. So I'm going with option number B. Question number A. During the hardness test, the load is maintained constant for. Question number A. Option number A is given as ten to fifteen seconds. Option B is given as twenty to twenty-five seconds. Option C is given as thirty to forty seconds. And option D is given as forty to forty-five seconds. In Brinell hardness test, the load is maintained constant for ten to fifteen seconds. So I am going with option number A, ten to fifteen seconds. In question number nine, in Wicker's hardness test, Wicker's hardness test dash type of intender is used. Option A is given as square based diamond pyramid. Option B is given as rectangle based diamond pyramid. An option C is given as hardened steel ball intender, and an option D is given as any one of these. For this question, you guys answer in the comment box as a homework. Question number ten: In the Wicker's hardness test, the angle between the opposite faces of the square pyramid shaped diamond diamond intender is. The Wicker's hardness test: the angle between the opposite faces of the square pyramid shaped diamond intender is. Option A is given as 136 degree, and option B is given as 210 degree, and option C is given as 110 degree, and option D is given as 45 degree. What is the angle between the opposite faces of square pyramid shaped diamond intender? Is the op op answer is correct answer is option A, 136 degree. You guys may have to uh, get the answer for the previous question in this uh, question itself. I think you can. Uh, comment it, the answer in the comment box, and I will be answering that answer for you in the next video. 
question number 11 vickers hardness number vhn is equal to option a is given as 1.8544 p by d square or b is equal to 1.8590 p by d square option c is given as d square by 1.8544 p and option d is given as d square divided by 1.8590 p so i am going with option number a 1.8544 p by d square VHN is equal to 1.8544 P by D square. This is very important number. I will be getting in problems if problems are asked in the MCQ type. The most widely used hardness test is hardness test is Rockwell hardness. Option A is given as Rockwell hardness test. Option B is given as Brinnell hardness test. Option C is given as Vickers hardness test. Option D is given as all the above. Which or uh, which is used uh, most widely in the all over the world for hardness test is option A is given as Rockwell hardness test. This is the right answer. The most widely used uh, hardness test is Rockwell hardness test. Question number 13. The type of impact test are what are the type of impact test? Option A is given as Isod test and option B is given as Charpy test. Option C is given as both A and B and option D is given as none of these. The type of impact tests are Isoid test and Charpitz test both are impact tests so I am going with option number C both A and B for the homework question just type the question number and the answer option and uh, type it in the comment box question number 14 which of the following is correct for visual inspection option A is given as the simplest process option B is fastest option C is given as widely used uh, NDT and option D is given us all the above. Which option do you think is the correct? Visual inspection. We can uh, use the simplest because we will be seeing and we will just noting the readings. Fastest because uh, we can just see uh, it's uh, done. It's 3 meter. This is 3 mm. This is 4 mm writing and going away. So it's the fastest. Most widely used NDT and we are going with option number D all the above. Visual inspection is commonly used to do option A to detect the surface characteristics, option B to check the strain to such a stain in the transparent materials, to, option number C is to inspect corrosion, option D is all the above. What do you think guys? Visual inspection is commonly used for to detect the surface characteristics, to check the stain in the transparent materials, to inspect corrosion, all of this, all the above. While checking, you'll be seeing ah this is surface is good. You'll be saying ah this uh, there is a stain in this transparent surface, so I'm not going to buy it. The people won't buy it, so that piece is rejected. To check corrosion, if there is any damage, then we'll be replacing it with a new one. So going with option number D, all the above. Question number sixteen: The advantage of visual testing. Option A is simple and easy to use. Option B relatively inexpensive. Option C testing speed is higher. Option D all the above. We know visual testing is uh, fastest, so testing speed is higher. You can uh, this product is uh, good. This product is bad. You can easily check it. Relatively inexpensive. Seeing what for seeing what cost you are going to give. No cost. No power is needed. That is no mechanical energy, no electrical energy, no none type, uh, no type of energy is needed. So we are going. It is relatively inexpensive. Option A is simple and easy to use. So I am going with option number D all the above. What are the limitations of visual testing? Eye fatigue. Option A is given as eye fatigue. Option B is given as eye resolution is weak. Option C is given as limited to detection of surface flaws. And option D is given as all the above. We are, we are seeing an object. Your eye gets strained. So I am going with option number A. Fatigue, your, your eye resolution is very weaker. If there is micro crash, you can't see it. So, B is also correct. Limited to detection of surface flaws. While seeing it, can you see the internal part of the object? No, definitely not. So, I am going with option number D all the above. All the three are the limitations of visual testing. Question number 18. Typical application of visual ap uh, inspection include. Option A is checking the surface condition of the component. Option B is given as checking the shape of the component. Option C is given as checking for evidence of leaking. And option D is given as all the above. All the three applications come under visual inspection. So I am going with option number D all the above. 
well seeing it we'll all we'll all be seeing for all these conditions and application for this application we can uh, we'll apply visual inspection so i'm going with option d all the above question number 19 liquid penetration test can be effectively used for option a is given as ferrous materials option b is given as non ferrous materials option c is given as ceramics and polymers and option d is given as all the above liquid penetration test can be used for all the three so i'm going with option number d all the above we can use liquid penetration test for materials like ferrous materials non ferrous materials ceramics and polymers and so i'm going with option d all the above question number 20 the advantage uh, advantage of liquid penetration testing are a easy to use and simple b highly portable c application of, to complex shapes option d all of this it is definitely easy to use you're just applying the liquid on the surface then removing it and seeing it where it is uh, your the liquid will be off uh, mixed with the dye and we'll be using our this uh, stainless place in this area so it is easy to use highly portable just a liquid to carry an application to complex shapes you can apply it to complex shapes remove it wash it and you can uh, examine it so liquid uh, penetration test has its advantages easy to use and simple highly portable application to complex shapes so i'm going with option number d all the all of these magnetic particles testing question number 21 magnetic particle testing is used and can be applicable for the materials which can be easily magnetized option a true or false magnetic particle testing is you can use and can be applicable only for materials having easily magnetized so i'm going with option number a true question number 22 magnetic particle testing is only applicable for ferro materials ferro magnetic materials option option a is given as true and option b is given as false magnetic particle testing is only applicable for ferromagnetic particles it cannot be applying for paramagnetic and diamagnetic so i am going with option number a true question number 23 the advantages of magnetic particle testing is option a is given as it is relatively simple and fast applicable to complex geometries it is portable all the three uh are the advantages of uh, magnetic particle testing it is very simple and fast you are just applying magnetic uh it is just applying uh, the materials magnetized and there will be more magnetic flux in the place where there is defects so it can be easily easy and fast you can just check uh, here there is a crack here some uh, more magnetic flux and there is a crack here so you will just find in that way so it will relatively simple and fast is applicable to complex geometries it is highly portable so i'm going with option number d all the above you can magnetize a particle uh in place to place so i'm going with option number d all the above it is highly portable question number 24 the limitation of magnetic particle testing option a is given as can only detect defects at or near surface high current sources required after testing the part must be demagnetized and cleaned option d all yeah it is true that it uh, defects uh, or it can be detected at defects or near surfaces can only be detected at near defects and near surface because at the defects the magnetic uh, that magnetic flux will be more so option a is true option b high current sources required to magnetize a material you need high current so option b is right option c is given as after testing the part must be demagnetized and cleaned yeah definitely it must be demagnetized and cleaned so i'm going to with option number d all the above question number 25 the application of magnetic particle testing method includes option a inspection of uh, weld cracks option b is given as inspection of cutting rods option c is given as inspection of fans and blowers in thermal power plants and option d is given as all the above yeah definitely magnetic particle testing is used in inspection of welding cracks for that one for that purpose only magnetic particle testing is used inspection of connecting rods yeah there is a crack in connecting rod we have to be checked with magnetic particle testing inspection of fans and blowers in thermal power plants yeah definitely for that purpose also we are using magnetic particle testing so i'm going to option number d all the above hope you guys like the video for more videos like this please subscribe to the channel don't forget to answer in the comment box i'll be uh, i'll be saying the name who answered first till today midnight so i'm going thank you guys bye that's the video for today thank you guys bye